Well, good morning, and thank you for joining us at Finland Mennonite on YouTube. We're here on our third Sunday of Advent, and Advent is this time of preparation leading up to the celebration of Christ's birth on Christmas. Right? And so far, we've, we've talked about hope, we've talked about love, and specifically, we've talked about where people in exile turn for hope and love. Now, our focus for today, as you can see, is going to be joy. And specifically, where do we, as exiles, find it? As people who live in one place but belong to another. And where's this other place that we belong? Well, as followers of Jesus, we belong to his kingdom. And so let's use this morning to compare and contrast worldly joy versus kingdom joy. And you can decide which joy you think is superior. So what are some worldly places that people turn to for joy? What are things people pursue to be filled with joy? Maybe think of in your own life, places you look to for joy. We can think of maybe some good things, things that, um, that most of us would say, yeah, these are definitely places to, to find joy. We think of family or, or, or friends, right? To find joy, to find happiness, to have that sense of, of enjoyment with one another. Maybe it's in success that we find our joy, whether it's success in sports, success in the business world, success financially, uh, however you might define success. Maybe it's just simply success in a video game or success in a board game. Um, but success, right? Being first, being the best. Maybe we find joy there. Maybe it's setting and meeting goals, right? Some of us love to, to do that. We find joy in checking off our to-do lists and writing our checklists and finishing them and completing these things, overcoming. Maybe it's setting new best records for ourselves in whatever it is that we might be interested in. Right? What brings you joy? Where do you turn to for joy? Maybe it's finding joy in our stuff. Maybe it's in our clothing or our shoes. Maybe it's in our jewelry or watches. Maybe it's in our socks. Maybe it's having the latest technology, latest and greatest. Maybe it's having fast cars and shiny wheels. Whatever it is, what are places that people in this world turn for joy? Right? That's what we want to be thinking about this morning. And what I want you to do is keep these on your mind, or even maybe ones you thought of, as we turn now to our text for this morning. Think about how these sources compare with God's, and specifically what you hear Jeremiah telling us about these things that God is promising his people. Now I'm going to read verses 1 to 14 out of chapter 31. We're continuing through, so if you remember we started at chapter 29 two weeks ago. Last week we were in 30. Now we're in chapter 31. So we're going to read verses 1 to 14. And as I do, I want you to listen for and mark or circle if you are okay with that in your Bibles as you follow along. Um, how many times you hear words of joy being shared? So maybe it's rejoice or enjoy or gladness or, or merry. Just follow along, listen, and identify those things, right? And hear what it's saying. We're going to kind of come back to that at the end. But we're in, again, Jeremiah 31. We're going to read verses 1 to 14. So go ahead and pull those Bibles out. Grab, your, grab ahead and, and find Jeremiah. Hopefully you're, you now know where it is if you've been joining with us. But here's what it, what it says. We're going to, again, read the verse, first 14 verses together this morning. And then we'll talk about three phrases in particular that I want to help us remember going into this coming week. So here's what it says. At that time, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the clans of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness when Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall adorn yourself with 
tambourines and shall go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when watchmen will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Arise and let us go up to Zion to the Lord our God. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, the pregnant women and she who is in labor together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with pleas for mercy I will lead them back. I will make them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd keeps his flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from the hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the heights of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock of the herd. Their life shall be like a watered garden, and they shall languish no more. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will feast of the soul. I will feast the soul of the priests with abundance, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, declares the Lord. So I don't know if you were tracking along, if you were following along, but how many words did you count? How many words of joy did you count? I got seven. Seven times in 14 verses, we hear words of joy, right? This is God's way of saying through Jeremiah that he wants his people bursting with joy. So let's look at three key phrases this morning to see what this kingdom joy that God provides is all about. And so we're going we're gonna to see, first we see this phrase, everlasting love. I love this idea, everlasting love. In verse 3, God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Right? Think about everlasting, never ending, no strings attached. Nothing can break it. Nothing can separate you from it. Right? Can any of the places we turn for joy in this world offer this same promise? I don't know. I don't think so. All right? That's the first one is everlasting love. And if that's not good enough, he, he follows directly up on that. The second half of verse three, he says, faithfulness to you. He says, I've loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. See, so much of our world friends, operates from this, what have you done for me recently perspective, or a contract kind of mentality that bails if we don't hold up to our end of the agreement. But this isn't what God is saying here, right? For sure, the, the people of Israel and Judah have experienced consequences for their choices, right? I mean, the, the first many chapters of Jeremiah, if you've been reading along with us and have taken up the challenge to read through the book of Jeremiah during Advent this year, you know there's some, some harsh consequences here. So, so obviously that's there. Uh, but, but God does not abandon them. He right? doesn't turn his back on them fully. Um, he, 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 doesn't, he, he, doesn't, um, he doesn't just let anything happen. Right? He still remains faithful. Well, he doesn't abandon the people of Israel, and he's not going to abandon you either, even when you fail to come through on your end. See, what in, the, what in this world can offer that? A faithfulness to you. Right? Money? It's money. Faithful. 
to you? What about fame or success? Are these things faithful to you or are they dependent upon something? Is there a contract involved where you have to keep up some kind of end of your deal in order to get the good things that you want, right? People can fall out of favor, even in fame. We see this all the time right now in social media and, and different things. We see people who have accumulated a mass of followers only to do something that causes many of them to turn away. How about popularity, right? Same kind of thing. Is popularity faithful to you? No. It only kind of lets you achieve the, the amount you're willing to put into it. Uh, big homes, fast cars, positions of influence. I keep, keep naming them, keep listing them. What of these things has proven to be faithful back to you? All these worldly things we may turn to for joy. None of them promise to be faithful back to you. So he says, I will give you an everlasting love. I will have faithfulness to you. And then you have to flip to the, to the end of the chapter, to the last verse that I read, verse 14, to, to get this third phrase that I want us to remember this morning. This idea, you shall be satisfied. Right? This idea, shall be satisfied. Have you ever gotten to a place where you were fully, completely, and utterly satisfied? Maybe in a job well done, perhaps in overcoming a difficult challenge, maybe it's mastering a new skill, uh, studying really hard and doing really well on a test. I mean, probably all experienced some time in life where, where we could say, yeah, I've experienced satisfaction. Maybe it's just eating a good meal and having a, a belly full of food, whatever it might be. I'm sure you've experienced something where you, even for a moment, said, I am satisfied right now. But, but here's my question for you. How, how long did it last? How long did that satisfaction last for you? Probably depends on what it was, right? Uh, so Christmas is coming up, right? And a lot of us will be opening gifts. I'm excited about that. I'm sure you're excited about that as well. Maybe it's even a, you can't wait to be able to open up this gift. Maybe you've seen the gifts and they've been sitting under the tree and you just can't wait to rip them open to see what they are and, it, and enjoy them for, for all their worth. But, but here's the thing, right? Hold up for a second because here's my question and my point in all this. Didn't you receive gifts last year for Christmas? Or the year before that, or the year before that, or the year before that, depending on your age, right? For me, I'm 37. So for the previous 36 Christmases, I've received a gift of some sort, right? You probably received gifts last year too. How come you aren't still satisfied with those gifts? And how come you're not still satisfied with those gifts? It would seem then that the things of this world that bring joy, well, they're susceptible to losing their ability to satisfy. So we want more, we want bigger, we want shinier, we want better, we want newer. But this phrase from God, this phrase from God is different. See, he says, my people shall be satisfied. And it has a sense of being satisfied continually. Right? Being satisfied continually. Think about that for a moment, if you can. Continual, complete satisfaction. No more longing for more. No more longing for the next one. No more longing for bigger. Because you are already completely satisfied. Right? So as we think about these three things, which these three phrases which mark the promises of the joy of the kingdom compared to 
our own experience of joy of the things of this world, let me ask you, which joy do you think sounds better? Right? The joy from this world or the joy from the kingdom? The joy from God, the joy from our creator. Now, truthfully, you may find and you will find things in this world that will show faithfulness to you. You may even experience loyal love. But how many things of this world offer all three all the time? Everlasting love, faithfulness to you, and complete, continual satisfaction. Right? See, those three, all at once, all at the same time, all the time, they can only be found from one. See, in verse 14 ends with it. Hear this verse again. And my people shall be satisfied, wait for it, with my goodness. God says with my goodness. See, it is God alone who can provide complete satisfaction, everlasting joy and loyal faithfulness. So here's my question for you this morning. Where are you looking for joy? Right? Where are you looking for joy? Now, this question reminds me, yesterday I was out hunting with my youngest son, Jace. He's six. He was out with me and loves to go out. And um, you know, We woke up. First thing he said is, Dad, let's go out today. I think it's going to be a good day. And uh, we got dressed. We made it out. And we sat in the morning together, a little bit over an hour, maybe an hour and a half. You know what we didn't see? We didn't see any deer. In fact, I don't think we saw a single animal the entire time we were out there. No squirrels to keep us occupied. No birds. We heard lots of birds. Didn't see any birds, but absolutely no deer. And that was that was the main reason we went, right? We were deer hunting. Um, and you know what? Yet yeah, when I talked to him about it, he said, what you think of what you think of it this morning? He said, oh, Dad, I loved it. It's like, you did. What was, what was so good about it? It's like, Dad, I was out in the woods with you. How could it get any better than that? Right? That's the heart. <laughs> Friends, that's the heart that you and I can have. Not, not obviously to hanging out with me in the woods, uh, certainly, right? But with our Heavenly Father. Right? Where are you looking for joy? Right? If he was looking for it in, in the animals or the, ex, or the excitement of it or, or getting a deer, or, he would have been thoroughly disappointed. Right? But he wasn't looking for those things. He was enjoying it because he was enjoying it with his dad, right? Me. Where are you looking for joy? In the things of this world? In the benefits of this world? Or in the one who created it all? See, our creator, God, he proved his everlasting love, his total faithfulness when he came himself in the flesh to make it possible for any and all to experience this true joy. This is why the angel Gabriel began with, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all people when announcing the birth of Jesus. And then Jesus, God in the flesh, he went on to live a, a life of loyal faithfulness to the Father, demonstrating everlasting love to God and to others. And for this, he was crucified and buried in a grave. But three days later, Jesus rose from the grave, overcoming death and conquering sin, providing forgiveness for your sins and for mine. See, and through Jesus, God will truly restore his people back into his presence. See, that's the, that's the thing that Jesus allowed to happen in all this. This is what he created to happen was a, a way for us to be brought back into relationship with our creator, back into relationship with, with God Almighty. And it's in him and with him and through him only that we can enjoy everlasting love, this 
faithfulness back to us and continual, complete satisfaction. So where are you looking for joy? And why would we look anywhere else besides the creator himself, the one who beckons us to himself, the one who promises everlasting love, loyal faithfulness, and continual, complete satisfaction? I pray that you would turn to him, that you would trust in him, that you would cry out to him and find your joy in him and him alone. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you so much for, for your love that is demonstrated in, in the fact that you sent Jesus, your only son, to come and die so that we could enjoy uh, you, that we could be brought back to you and to find everything our hearts are longing for. So, Father, I pray for everyone watching this, that, that this week they would be drawn more and more into your presence, that whether they um, have been following you for, for their entire lives, whether they are just sort of interested in checking you out, or, or maybe they want nothing to do with you, I still pray, Lord, that you would break through into their heart and bring them back to you through Jesus. God, thank you so much um, that you sent your son, that we could be fulfilled and, and filled with, with joy. Um, nothing that this earth uh, offers can, is quite like it. Um, and so just thank you for it. Thank you for each and every one joining us this morning. Um, may you be glorified as you continue to work in each of our lives for your glory and for our good and the good of those around us. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I do want to thank you for joining us this morning and I want to leave you with this blessing and, and send you with this as you go this week. So go from here rejoicing in Christ. As you encounter others this week seeking joy, may you lovingly lead them to the one who will cause them to rejoice by his everlasting love and faithfulness. Amen. Thanks for joining us this morning. Have a blessed week.